Welcome to another edition of Africa Sideways coming to you from Atlantis. Coming to you from Atlantis in the Western Cape. And look what we got here. We've got the Amarok Canyon, ladies and gentlemen. It's just been loving this the sand here. Dropped it down to one bar and it's just cruising.
I'm glad you guys like it. Doesn't it get it doesn't get any better than this, man? <laughs> Canyon's been fantastic here at Atlantis, loving the off-road, eating it for breakfast. Oh, for 800,000 Rand, I'd say it's the best bucky for 800,000 Rand. It would eat the Raptor with bigger tires. I guess that's why Ford's bringing out the V6 Raptor to compete with this. Beast. Tuna's done all right, got stuck three times. Old Mara didn't quite give it enough mumbo, but it's still a nice truck. <laughs> so what do you, as they, they, what does the Italian stallion think of, of uh, Atlantis here? Yeah. It's great. Great place. Wonderful. Great place for the whole family. There's no need for heroes. You've had your adventure for today. <laughs> Okay, in the truck, Joe. another edition of Africa Sideways and we've got something very saucy for you today it's the VW Amarok Canyon V6 Ooh, just get a load of that fastest bucky in the world fastest production bucky in the world I'd say easily fastest bucky in the southern hemisphere the new Amarok Canyon Pushing 200 kilowatts of power, three liter V6, one of the best VW engines ever made. This Amarok has got you covered for power. Good. Took it to Atlantis Sand Dunes on the weekend with my friend who's got a Fortuna. This thing didn't get close to getting stuck once. Thankfully, they put highest profile tires on here, so you're not. So you, you do have some tire to let down but to be honest the first thing i do if i got this car was put a bigger set of tires on i think with a set of 33s the same size tires as the raptors this would be as capable as the raptor and a hell of a lot faster i can see now why they want to put the the 3 liter v6 into the raptor this, this size engine this is perfectly powered for a for a truck like this it just wants to eat all day long ladies and gentlemen reminds me a little bit of that little Audi A1 that they stuck the, the, the Golf GTI engine in it you, you kind of get to the stop sheet and it just wants to go you have to hold it back which is fantastic beautiful power delivery and if you want to draw, drive it sensibly it can turn into a sensible state car extremely comfortable and I think the reason, one of the reasons is they put a proper high profile, a 65 profile tire on here. Sure, it's only a 245 by 65, but it's on a 17 inch rim. So you've got options to, to, put, a, to put a nice all-terrain tire for the weekends. You leave these on for, for getting to work and back. 
Now VW has kept things very, very simple on this truck. There's no sat nav. You got to you put your key in. There's no push start button. It's got a traditional handbrake. I love all those things. I love my buckies to be simple and reliable. And I think to, to compete with the likes of, of the best-selling Toyota Hilux and the and the KB 300s making noises now, they have to make a, a reliable truck. It's not going to have too much electronics to go wrong in the bush. And this provides that in bucket loads. They've got the right, they've got it the right way around. They've got the big, meaty engine that can power you. You can tow with this thing. It's got all the power you need. Not overpowered, sufficient power. In Rolls Royce terms, sufficient power. But then when you want to, and then when you want to bury your foot in, look at that. And it corners like a sports car. It just wants to go all day long. It doesn't feel wild and, and woolly. Great brakes and handles superbly. Really is a joy to drive. So this is coming in at 799,000 Rand, which is just a couple of clicks less than, than a Ford Ranger. So this is the question I'm asking myself. Uh, with a Ranger, you get more clearance, you get better tire stock and arguably a better suspension stock. But it's missing that, that vital ingredients of Correctly powered engine. I find with a, with a with a, the two the, that two liter bi turbo works perfectly on a wild track or a standard Ranger. It's it's got a lot of power, but on the Raptor you just want that something that's gonna push you in the back of your seat like that. And this is what the Amarok provides you in bucket loads. I love this Canyon orange color. It really does pop. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with the Raptor. I'm just saying they've put the right engine. The rest of the package on the Raptor is perfect. It's a, it's a beast off-road. It just lacks that little bit of gas in it. And you can just kick it in the tonsils and it goes. On the, the downside of this car, they have kind of put a pseudo kind of dash plate, step plate, stepping board on, which doesn't which doesn't really work in my mind. It feels like if you actually do bash it, you're gonna have problems. Suspension feels very, very solid on this truck. Fantastic gearbox, smooth gear changes. It works great in the sand. Nice solid dashboard, clean. It, it it feels different to your regular BWs. Sometimes with the car companies they'll put the they'll put an SUV interior in and put a bucket bucky on the back and but this actually feels like a like a dedicated a dedicated truck. And remember this was designed by helped designed by Cyril von der Berber, multiple times South African rally champion, so you know the corner is gonna be good would be fantastic for on this side. Let's see what the acceleration is like. See it? Beautiful handling. Just sits around the corners. Really is a joy to drive. Fuel economy, I was doing about 12 litres per 100 k's, but that's with some spirits of driving. It's probably going to be more like 10 litres per 100 k's in, in, um, in real world driving. As you can see coming up the hill, yeah, it's, just, it's effortless. That's probably the best way to describe the new Amarok. Effortless motor. It takes all the good bits from an SUV, the comfortable ride and whatnot, and the ruggedness of a bucky 
puts it in a pot, mixes it together, and you've got the Amarok. Good on bumpy roads, you can drop the tire pressure, sings all day long. It's got a diff lock. It's got it's got everything you need to, to do serious off-roading, ladies and gentlemen. And then when you're feeling saucy, you just bang the bang it in like that and it goes all day long, ladies and gentlemen. But really a fantastic package, by far the best video I've driven in a long time. The Amarok really delivers on power, performance, the ultimate package you might say. My new favorite bucky for 2020, the Amarok Canyon 3 liter V6. Go get one. How many stars would I give this out of 10? I'm going to give this a good 9, nine out of 10. It really does tick a lot of boxes. It's got power, precision, handling, performance. Everything you need on a truck. The only thing that it doesn't get 10 out of 10 is the, is the reliability. When we're talking about reliability, VW is not at the top of that conversation, sadly, so... That's why it doesn't get 10 out of 10, but everything else in the car is just blinking. Another thing I like about this car it, is it doesn't beep at you the whole time. The Toyotas, a lot of the Japanese cars are like real uh, kind of control freak cars almost. They want to beep, 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 beep the whole time. But this, this car just lets you get on and do the driving. It's also got a tire pressure, mon a tire pressure monitor, which is essential. Very, very good. Well done VW for that. This is for prop people who want to go proper off-roading and get a, get a, get, are going to get a canyon. Would be great for towing, towing a caravan, towing a boat. It's really an outdoor adventure man or woman's vehicle. And for $7.99, it's, it's not bad value for money, I have to say. Very, very smooth on the sound system. <laughs> As you expect, that's at like three percent power. Let's test out the turning circle. Okay, is it going to make it? Yes. Very impressive turning circle. Nothing I can really. Nothing I can really fault on this car. I was a little bit surprised it didn't have, have GPS. I would have kind of expected it to have GPS. But I also get where they're going with this. They're cutting a lot of the frills, they're cutting a lot of fat out, and they're just giving you the raw, the, the raw guts of, of a truck, the manliness, if you're allowed to use that word these days. And, and it's, all, it's all in the engine on this truck. And the suspension, comfortable seats. The Amarok's a little bit wider than, than your standard standard pickup or bike you see, got a nice, it almost gives you this American style center console, it really is a thing of beauty with loads of theater on the highway, well let's not say on the highway, on a racetrack you can easily get over 200 kilometers an hour on this car, you're looking at an auto 100 of about 8 seconds, so you're getting near a sports car you're getting near sports car performance from something that can take you up Matruisburg. It can go anywhere a Land Cruiser can, especially if you put bigger tires on this truck. It really is the ultimate package. I like the styling. It's got some nice touches. It's got sort of a little, little sort of orange on the seat on the seat belts. Um, the seats are very comfortable. Bucket, perfect size. Buttons feel well made. I always liked that a well-made button. A well-made button normally means a well-made car. 